Former President Trump leaves office with one last parting shot of corruption because of course he would. His last acts in office included a raft of pardons that are bad. They are historically bad, even without the prior pardons and grants of clemency that involved pardoning Paul Manafort and a bunch of his cronies, this would have been amongst the most corrupt and despicable group of pardons in history. But even as bad as they are, it's hard not to take a step back and recognize that it could have been so, so much worse. But finally, it seems that there might actually be a silver lining here because the bar was so low with this presidency that we can finally step over it for once. So let's take stock and let's see the good and the bad here. Let's start with the bad news first, because these pardons are bad. They are historically bad. We start with a pardon for friend of the president, Steve Bannon. Bannon was facing a trial for fraud in connection to the Build the Wall campaign. And all signs point to Bannon stealing millions of dollars from actual Trump supporters. And it's also notable that other Build the Wall defendants who have also been accused and indicted of fraud were not pardoned. It was just the president's friend. As former representative Justin Amash said, it went from Mexico will pay for it to you will pay for it to you will pay Steve Bannon and I will pardon him for defrauding you. There's no good reason for this pardon. There's no reason at all for this pardon, except that it's good to be a friend of Donald Trump and swear Omerta to him. And that of course takes us to another good friend of Donald Trump, Elliot Broidy, who pleaded guilty last year to conspiring to violate foreign lobbying laws, to influence the Trump administration on behalf of Chinese and Malaysian interests. And he of course was implicated in what is now known as a pay for pardon scheme. Is there anything corrupt with this particular pardon for a Republican fundraiser who happens to be friend with uh, the former president? All signs point to yes on that one. And then there were more pardons for corrupt Republicans like Rick Renzi and Duke Cunningham. Renzi is a Republican and former member of the House who was sentenced to three years in prison in connection with a bribery scheme related to real estate. Cunningham also pleaded guilty to taking $2.4 million in bribes from military contractors. These are not good people. And there's just this pattern of pardoning outright criminal corruption. Just, we've never seen anything like it with presidential pardons before. Yes, a lot of former presidents seem to have a habit of pardoning light corruption for those who happen to be well-connected, but here, the worse the corruption, the more likely to get a pardon, and the corrupt are a preponderance of the pardons. It exists on both sides of the aisle. While there's certainly a preponderance of corrupt Republicans who have received pardons, that pattern continued with pardoning former Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick, who was convicted in 2013 for using his office to enrich himself through kickbacks, shakedowns, and bid rigging schemes. President Trump was clearly favoring his friends and business partners, but at the same time, he was just setting a precedent for absolving pure corruption, pure political and business related corruption. As political commentator Josh Barrow put it, they only make sense as a general statement that corruption is good. And that pattern of pardoning just outright corruption, specifically with an emphasis on real estate corruption, continues with the list of people who received pardons. For example, Shalom Weiss, who was sentenced to more than 800 years in prison for racketeering, fraud, and money laundering related to insurance fraud. And then Ilyahu Weinstein, who was sentenced to more than 20 years in prison for a real estate Ponzi scheme that caused $200 million in damages. And then oddly, Anthony Lewandowski, who pleaded guilty to stealing IP related to driverless cars when he left Google to go to Uber. And the list of overtly corrupt individuals who received a pardon is extremely long, but lest you think that Trump was only pardoning corruption, he also engaged in pure cronyism, like pardoning New York observers Ken Kersen, who was charged with cyber stalking last fall, and who happens to be a very, very good friend of Jared Kushner. And then as potentially the very last act in office, President Trump had one last pardon to dish out after the raft that he released at least at 1.30 in the morning. He also pardoned Albert Pirro, who was a real estate developer and notably was the ex-husband of Judge Jeanine Pirro from Fox News. Pirro had been convicted of conspiracy and tax evasion in 2000 and had actually represented Trump himself in some real estate deals. To say that these people are undeserving of pardons is a vast, vast understatement. 
And of course, potentially as a cherry on top at one o'clock in the morning, President Trump revoked his 2017 drain the swamp memo, which uh, prevented members of the White House from lobbying the government for five years so that the members of his administration can now lobby the government. It is time to drain the swamp in Washington, DC. In retrospect, looking at all of these actions, which were entirely foreseeable, it's not hard to see why people who thought that President Trump was the anti-corruption president and would actually drain the swamp also happened to believe in stupid conspiracy theories and absurd prognostications that never came true. But if you did believe any of those preposterously dumb things, please contact me. I have some really interesting investment opportunities. You might even call them unbelievable. But let's also take stock that this actually could have been much, much worse. President Trump could have pardoned himself and caused an actual constitutional crisis. Now, of course, the masochistic sportsman in me kind of wanted to see it just so that that uh, theory that the president could pardon himself would be smacked down in front of the Supreme Court as part of a Trump corruption and criminal investigation. It's also entirely possible that Trump could have pardoned members of his family, including Ivanka, Jared Kushner, Don Jr., Eric, Kimberly Guilfoyle. And it appears that he really, really wanted to do that, but that White House counsel, Pat Cipollone, said it would open Trump himself up to personal liability or criminal liability. And so the reason for him not undertaking these actions, which he apparently wanted to do, is that Donald Trump is selfish to the core and is willing to throw his own children under the bus. It's possible that he could have pardoned his own personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, who's under investigation for many fraud related things. It's also entirely possible that President Trump could have pardoned his own personal business associates like Trump Organization CFO, Alan Weisselberg, who also has been implicated in all kinds of Trump related fraud. He could have pardoned the Capitol rioters. Uh, he could have pardoned some of the Congress people who uh, helped foment some of the Capitol riots, including uh, Congressman Biggs and Gozar, who apparently sought pardons for their role in creating the Capitol riots. And one has to ask, if you're looking for a preemptive pardon, are you worried about criminal liability related there too? I'm going to cover this in a video shortly. We're lucky that there were only a handful of celebrity pardons for some reason, including Lil Wayne, Kodak Black, and Harry O of Death Row Records. And Joe Exotic of Tiger King fame is not amongst the pardonees. And the ultimate good news is that none of these pardons affect the impeachment trial in the Senate that remains uh, in the short term horizon. And of course, a new Department of Justice can create new criminal investigations and unearth all of the untoward doings of the late Trump presidency. Of course, it's going to take a long, long time to undo the damage of the Trump presidency. But like a loud orange fart, the noxious Trump presidency is already departing the room. And of course, it's important to recognize that none of this was normal. The Trump presidency ended like it began, as former President George Bush said, with some weird shit. And I look forward to covering the Biden administration. I will cover any dubious legal strategies that they undertake. My lawsuit against the White House will continue because it's about transparency, not about partisanship. But make no mistake, the last four years were not normal. And as a reminder, Donald Trump is now a private citizen. To the extent that he ever had immunity as president, he no longer has immunity for anything. These pardons are largely unjust, but they likely won't have systemic reverberations, or at least those reverberations should be dampened. Many who received these pardons might even face civil and state-based criminality down the line. These pardons are bad, but they're likely not earth shattering. By all appearances, the damage of the Trump administration was extensive, but it's contained. And now it's time to clean up the mess.